It's, I think it's pronounced Kamala Harris. Well, I call her Camilla. Camilla? Yeah. You just gonna run with that? Yeah, when I call somebody something, that would make me special. Camilla Harris, she's the original Hawk Tua girl. That's the way she got where she is. And uh, the party's going downhill if it's in her hands. That was she said she got her, her political star, her political upstart, because she was dating this guy, Willie, can't think of his last name right now. And he was married, and he was in his 60s, and Kamala Harris was just a spring chicken. And that is how she entered the political scene. Just like Barack Obama, they do what they need to do to stay close to the white power structure. Is the vice president of the United States really on the side of the people? Boosie insists on calling her Camilla instead of Kamala. Dr. Umar claims she isn't for black people and criticizes her marriage to a white man. And that's just the beginning. Why does Boosie refuse to say her name correctly? Is it a sign of deeper disrespect or is there more to the story? It's, I think it's pronounced Kamala Harris. Well, I call her Camilla. Camilla? Yeah. You just gonna run with that? Yeah, that's when I call somebody something, that's what make me special. Dr. Umar says Kamala Harris isn't for black people. Why does he believe this? And is there truth behind his accusations? Just like Barack Obama, they do what they need to do to stay close to the white power structure. And what about the rumors that she slept her way into power? Shocker, either Kamala Harris, she's the original Hawk Tua girl, that's the way she got where she is, and uh, the party's going downhill if it's in her hands. That was Could this be true? Kamala Harris, the first female vice president of the United States, has been a polarizing figure. While some praise her accomplishments, others criticize her actions and question her motives. There have been so many controversies surrounding Kamala Harris, from Boosie's persistent misnaming to Dr. Umar's harsh critiques and the shocking accusations of her rise to power. But why are influential figures like Boosie and Dr. Umar speaking out against her? And how do these accusations hold up against the facts? Let's find out. In a 2021 interview, rapper Boosie Badass shared his candid thoughts on Kamala Harris, whom he referred to as Camilla. His remarks were a mix of admiration and skepticism, reflecting his complex view on her role as vice president. Boosie began by expressing his unconventional pronunciation of Harris's name. It's, I think it's pronounced Kamala Harris. C well, I call her Camilla. Camilla? Yeah. You just gonna run with that? Yeah, that's when I call somebody something, that's what make me special. Dr. Umar Johnson, a well-known psychologist and social critic, is among those who have been vocal about his disapproval of Kamala Harris running for president. In a recent interview, he articulated his concerns and criticisms of her political record and stance on racial issues, drawing parallels to former President Barack Obama. Just like Barack Obama, they do what they need to do to stay close to the white power structure. He accused Harris of having a track record of incarcerating black people, stating she made a career locking up black people. He also criticized her for downplaying the reality of racism in America. This is the same woman who went on international television and said America is not a racist country, Johnson emphasized, highlighting the dissonance between her statement and the experiences of many black Americans. You want me to go vote for a so-called black woman who went on international television and told the world that America is not a racist country. One of Johnson's main issues with Harris is her perceived lack of identification with the black community. He argued that her mixed race heritage is not the problem. Rather, it is her failure to advocate for black people. My issue ain't her being mixed race. My issue with her is not identifying with her people. He explained, Johnson recounted an interview where Harris allegedly stated that laws specifically benefiting black people could not be passed, questioning why similar laws were enacted for other minority groups. Johnson pointed out what he sees as inconsistencies in Harris's policy positions, particularly her support for legislation benefiting specific ethnic and social groups. He questioned, if the Democratic Party can't do anything just for black people, why did y'all pass a law only for Asians, only for Native Americans, only for transgenders, only for LGBTQ, only for immigrants? Johnson argued that these actions contradict Harris's claims and demonstrate a lack of commitment to the black community. Comedian Cat Williams, another black celebrity hesitant to endorse Kamala Harris, has voiced his skepticism in several routines. Over the years, Williams has frequently referenced the vice president, often expressing doubts about her authenticity as a black woman. Oh, and that's how you can tell the vice president is a real black woman. You don't see her nowhere. She ain't at the mall, at the club, nothing. She in her room at the White House. 
When Kamala Harris was sworn in as Vice President of the United States on January 20th, 2021, it was a momentous occasion that marked a series of historic firsts. Harris made history by becoming the first woman ever to hold the second highest office in the country. Moreover, as the daughter of Jamaican and Indian immigrants, she also became the first Black and first South Asian American to occupy this significant position. Harris's ascent to the vice presidency was a groundbreaking achievement, symbolizing progress and the breaking of long-standing barriers in American politics. Her role not only represented a milestone for women, but also for the diverse communities she embodies, reflecting a broader shift towards inclusivity and representation in the highest echelons of government. Now, with President Joe Biden's endorsement for the 2024 Democratic nomination, following his decision to drop out of the presidential race on July 21, 2024, Harris is again positioned to make history. She stands to become the first Black and Asian American woman ever to lead a major party ticket in a presidential election. This potential achievement underscores her significant role in the current political landscape. Despite these historic accomplishments, a considerable portion of the African American community has been reluctant to fully acknowledge her as one of their own. This skepticism highlights ongoing debates about her connection to and representation within the Black community. On that one ex-user who posted a video of her saying she's an American as opposed to an African-American wrote, this is video proof for those of y'all who keep calling Kamala Harris a black woman. She is not. In her book, she says, I consider myself an American, a proud daughter of immigrants and a proud Indian American, not a black woman. <laughs> How do I describe myself? I describe myself as a proud American. That's Another user wrote, remember when? And if you don't actually remember when, just lie and the progressive media will cover for you. However, Harris has been very vocal about her identity as a member of the African-American community. During a 2019 appearance on The Breakfast Club, co-host Charlemagne the God asked Harris about claims that she was not African-American simply because her parents were immigrants. So I was born in Oakland and raised in the United States, except for the years that I was in high school in Montreal, Canada, Harris replied. And look, this is the same thing they did to Barack Obama. This is not new to us. And so I think that we know what they are trying to do. As for being black, she put it plainly, I'm black and I'm proud of being black. I was born black, I will die black, and I'm not going to make excuses for anybody because they don't understand. The skepticism surrounding Kamala Harris's authenticity among some in the black community stems from her frequent self-revelations, which some interpret as suggesting she does not fully belong. One notable instance occurred during a morning radio show interview where Harris candidly discussed her stance on MJ legalization. In this conversation, she shared that she had used marijuana during her college years, a revelation that many found surprising given her position. Her discussion on the topic was marked by a lighthearted tone and laughter. She took the opportunity to make a playful reference to former President Bill Clinton's well-known statement during his presidential campaign. Clinton had claimed he had smoked MJ while at Oxford but had not inhaled, a statement widely scrutinized and ridiculed. Harris's joke about Clinton's claim was intended to add humor to the discussion, but it also highlighted a broader issue. By openly discussing her past MJ use and using humor to navigate her public image, Harris's approach may be perceived by some as distancing herself from the traditional experiences and narratives associated with the black community. This has contributed to ongoing debates about her authenticity and connection to the African-American experience. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and college, I and I inhaled. I did. I did, did inhale. inhale. Did inhale. Okay. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> but no. yes. I know you have to go. They say you have to go. I just want to. I However, there was one part of that interview and her MJ escapades that seemed to convince people she might not be a truth sayer. During the interview, after Harris admitted to smoking in college, she also said she listened to Snoop Dogg and Tupac Shakur while getting high. What were what you, you listening to when you was high? <laughs> what was on? What song? Was Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, definitely Snoop. Uh-huh. Uh, Tupac, Tupac, for sure. Here's the problem. Harris graduated from Howard in 1986 and law school in 1989. Snoop Dogg, then known as Snoop Doggy Dogg, didn't get started until 1992, and Tupac's career did not take off until the early 1990s when he debuted in Digital Underground's same song from the soundtrack to the 1991 film Nothing But Trouble. So either Harris was baked enough to time travel, or she hit the bong after being in school. Not cool for a candidate whose slogan is speaking truth, demanding justice. 
Most likely, many believe she's just trying to curate a playlist that sends the right message, but lying for it is where people have a problem. Her comments had several people talking, including X's CEO, Elon Musk, who quipped, maybe she had incredible foresight. Suffice it to say many people weren't buying the foresight story, but there were still those who came to her defense, like this user who wrote, just an FYI to anyone reading this, in context, she's answering the original question asked of her of what music she listens to, and she is ignoring the question about smoking W in college. This explains why she also includes Cardi B in the list. Even if this user was right, that was not the only detail that came out about her trying to pander to the African-American community. In fact, the other report that came out confirmed to several members of the community that she wasn't one of them. At the time, the headline literally said, she attended an HBCU to be immersed in black culture. In the 1980s, Harris attended Howard University in Washington, D.C., and she found that the experience of going to historically black colleges and universities proved particularly important when it came to feeling connected to the community. In 2019, she told the Washington Post, when you're at an HBCU, and especially one with the size and with the history of Howard University, and also in the context of also being in D.C., which was known forever as being Chocolate City, it just becomes about you understanding that there is a whole world of people who are like you. It's not just about there are a few of us who may find each other. Besides these contentious revelations, there are a few other reasons folks don't think Kamala Harris might be the best person for the job. There are broadly two ways to become the presidential nominee of one of America's two major political parties, according to political analysts. One is to rise as an insider, brushing past rivals while taking advantage of a family name, a long run in Congress, or the mentorship of powerful elders. Experts think of the two Bush presidents and Joe Biden. The other way is to win as an outsider, through charisma and chutzpah. Barack Obama and Donald Trump did that. Kamala Harris, the clear front runner to become the Democratic nominee following Mr. Biden's decision to withdraw from the 2024 presidential race, belongs emphatically to the first camp. Despite the criticism, Kamala Harris has her fair share of supporters within the black community. These supporters see her as a trailblazer and a symbol of progress. For starters, high-profile figures like Jay-Z and Beyonce have publicly defended Harris. You see, Beyonce actually allowed Kamala to use her song in her campaign trail. On Monday, Harris made an appearance at her Wilmington, Delaware campaign headquarters following President Joe Biden's endorsement of her candidacy. As she made her big entrance, the vice president walked out to Freedom, a track off Beyonce's seminal 2016 album, Lemonade. According to CNN, Beyonce's reps have officially granted Harris permission to use Freedom, which features a guest appearance by rapper Kendrick Lamar, while on the campaign trail ahead of the Novia 5 presidential election, and the vice president seemingly doubled down on the song's forward-thinking message of self-empowerment in her speech. What kind of country do we want to live in? A country of freedom, compassion, and rule of law, she told the crowd? Or a country of chaos, fear, and hate? And we believe in our foundational principles. We believe in freedom and opportunity and justice, not for some, but for all. Beyonce and Jay-Z's endorsement of Kamala Harris has led to speculation about the extent of their influence and the potential reasons behind it. One theory is the financial aspect. How much money are Beyonce and Jay-Z pouring into Kamala Harris's campaigns? This question isn't just about campaign contributions, but also about the potential favors that might be exchanged. Are Beyonce and Jay-Z supporting Harris in hopes of gaining some political leverage or protection? Some speculate that this support could be tied to hiding their own controversies and crimes, though such claims often border on conspiracy theories. The connection between Kamala Harris and powerful figures like Beyonce and Jay-Z also raises questions about the broader network of influence in politics. Just the other day, Jay-Z's close friend Diddy was publicly accused by several women, including Cassie Ventura, of allegedly essaying them. This led many to start questioning Jay-Z's integrity and whether he was also involved in Diddy's shady dealings. Now, this recent endorsement has fueled rumors about the lengths these celebrities might go to secure political allies. Are Beyonce and Jay-Z desperate to have Kamala Harris in a position of power to protect their interests? Anyway, Carla Mayne the God has also endorsed Harris, stating that her policies and vision align with the needs of black Americans. These Hollywood celebrities have also thrown their weight behind Harris, seeing her as a beacon of hope and progress in a political landscape that often marginalizes black voices. However, the black community's reaction to Kamala Harris is far from monolithic. 
While some see her as a champion, others view her as a symbol of betrayal. Kamala Harris's personal life has also been a subject of controversy. For starters, there have been claims that Harris got her start by having an affair with a married man, California politician Willie Brown. Kamala Harris's career has long been intertwined with her relationship with Willie Brown, a prominent Democratic figure in California politics. When Harris was a local prosecutor in Oakland, she dated Brown, who was 30 years older than her. Brown, a former San Francisco mayor, was instrumental in launching her political career. Willie Brown, now 90, once warned Harris in a 2020 op-ed in the San Francisco Chronicle to turn down Joe Biden's offer to be his vice presidential running mate. He wrote that the role of vice president often leads to a dead end, citing examples like Al Gore, who never became president despite being vice president. Throughout her career, Harris has had to address the notion that her relationship with Brown was a crucial factor in her political rise. The relationship ended decades ago, but it has continued to be a topic of discussion. Harris once described Brown as an albatross hanging around my neck. Although their relationship has often been called an affair, it's worth noting that Brown was separated from his wife, Blanche Vitero, for over 10 years when he and Harris dated in the mid-1990s. Their past relationship resurfaced in January 2019 when Brown published an op-ed in the San Francisco Chronicle titled, Sure, I Dated Kamala Harris, So What? In it, he acknowledged their relationship and mentioned his support for her first race for district attorney in San Francisco, 